My name is Doris Venter. I'm actually uh, an art teacher for over 25 years. Um, I have a BFA and an MFA in fine art. I currently teach at an independent school called the Portledge School in Locust Valley, and I've been running my own side business, my own side hustle for over 15 years called Library Arts. I found you because I was searching on Google, I think, for you know, art programs and libraries. I'm always trying to find people who are doing what we're doing just to see what's out there. And because I see, you know, I felt for a long time, like we're the only people doing this. Yeah. So, and that's how I found you. I found, because your name is Library Art. So it took right. me directly to you and found you on Instagram, I think. So like one of my questions is, how did the recession of 2008 affect your business? Because, you know, I th that's where I'm at. Is like, this is, it's probably worse than 2008. You know what, for me, honestly, I don't think it was bad. In fact, I think it was better for me because what happens, I think personally, is when you have a recession and even like we're having now, yeah, the first things that parents do is they have to cut their budgets and they have to say, where can we save money in our family and our family budget? So, okay, we're not going to the movies. We're not going to Chuck E. Cheese. We're not doing all these fun vacations, but you know what's down the road is the public library. Yeah. And they're always offering free, although we're paying for it through our tax dollars, free yeah. programs. So summer camps out, but summer session at the library where they have free programs is in. Mm -hmm. So I found that librarians, when things are tough, they group together and become a dynamo of making things available virtually, in this case this year. Mm. or programmed in general, they, they up the ante. Yeah. Uh, they bring more programmers in, of course, based on their budget. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, the more feet they get in the door, the better their budget goes or the way the community um, thinks when they're voting on the annual budget. Yeah. So I think it was, you know, uh, actually a little better. It didn't. Okay. So I think this too is an opportunity mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's an entrepreneur, but I think it's actually going to be helpful. I think librarians are going to go into overdrive, mm -hmm. see the opportunity to engage the patrons in ways that they haven't in the past because they're mm -hmm. always like when 3D printers came out, they were the first one on the block to have them in their buildings. Maker spaces, we're making a maker space. You know, they want anything that's going to engage patrons to come through mm -hmm. their doors they're going to adapt very quickly. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's what I've observed. It makes them relevant to oh, people's yes. lives. It's all about being relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that gives me hope. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. But I think it's, you know, it's our opportunity as well. We need to make ourselves relevant to mm -hmm. the customer. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, can't come in the door? I can do it virtually. And you need to be able to flip on a dime. You need to be able to say, I'm shifting right now mm -hmm. and anticipate the shift and get on board quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, is kind of that entrepreneurial spirit, but it's also listening and responding quickly mm -hmm. before everybody else moves in and takes advantage of those opportunities. And they're going to go to the people they trust first. Yeah. Are you willing to do this? We like you. We've worked with you in the past. Yeah. We're looking at this model. Would you be able to adapt? Absolutely. Give me an hour or two to figure it out and I'll have something for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We're doing that a lot. Yes. And I think there's going to be librarians who are at the front who are going to say, okay, I'll take a risk and maybe do kits. We've already had a librarian ask us about that. And so then I can float the idea to the other librarians like, hey, we did this in this town. What do you think about doing that? And That's I think right. if one person has done it, then they yes. feel a little more confident, like, oh, okay, you know, maybe I'll, I'll ask yeah, my director. They, and they see. are a tight knit group. They talk yeah. to each other a lot. Yeah. And believe me, they're having their Zoom meetings between libraries, mm -hmm. directors talking to directors, librarians talking to librarians. And I mean, I've had everything from can you drop off kits? Mm -hmm. That then when you come on, everybody would have their kit and they would follow along with you Yeah. to a librarian literally who reached out to me today. She had booked me for six programs for the summer, which I was super psyched about. That's a lot. 
Now, what would have been maybe 265, 275 per program has mm. gone down to $100 a program because yeah. that's their budget. But listen, I'm not going to turn that work away and I'm mm. going to say, sure. Mm-hmm. but it's all just pre-taped. I'm not going to even do it live. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to tape myself creating each one of these projects, yeah. share it with her. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And you can use that again, that material that oh, you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So that's the plan. We haven't had anyone ask us to do that yet. I feel like the live component is important right now. Yeah. For a lot of people, I mean, you probably would have charged more for a live lesson, I think. Yeah. And maybe that was the issue with the budget. But, you know, people want to see people because we're not seeing anyone right now. We're all right stuck now, in our houses. People are anxious. This librarians have heard the horror stories about Zoom bombers, and they're very nervous about uh, liability yeah. issues. So some of them are like, our director said, no live programs. Yeah. And others are like, wow, that one was such a success. Can we do another one with you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, so I'm getting both. Yeah, I think as time if this goes on for a long time, people will become more comfortable with it as they learn about how you know what we're doing with the passwords and locking the meeting after five minutes. You know, those are the things that we're doing to protect that space. Right. So they're they're learning as they go, just like we are. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's room for other people to come in as well if they have some credibility in terms of I've taught in the classroom or I've done, you know, paint and sip parties for years and I can, you know, now do this in a video format for you. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think it's just the people that they've had because I don't know that everyone who does what we do can pivot that quickly. We've had to do it because we're teaching well, in the classroom and we see it happening around us, but not everyone can do that. Right. So what gave you the idea initially to even go to a library and ask them, did, was someone else teaching art classes or? Uh, no, actually, I have to be honest. My husband was between jobs. Mm-hmm. We were looking to supplement our income because I still had a steady job. And I said, you know, our public library, which is just a mile from our house or less, I said, I always see their advertising programs with, you know, art teachers or crafts people coming in, why don't I just go down there and ask them if I can do something? I was literally that kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. And I went down there and, you know, you just happen to speak to somebody kind who's open-minded and they say, sure, what do you got? I mm-hmm. said, I'll be back in a couple of days with some ideas because mm-hmm. I didn't really know what I was going to offer. Yeah. So back then, I mean, I went a little bit over the top. I thought I had to do a PowerPoint presentation to show kids and then then bring the materials out, do all this stuff. And it was just ridiculous what I thought I had to jump through. And it took me a while to realize all they want is for you to come in, say, hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to make today and get everybody started. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it really was a financial need. And then as soon as I started, within a month or two, my husband said, you need a website and I can build one for you. And then it was building uh, programming. Like it took a long time. And I, and I have to be honest, I put a lot of hours into building those initial programs, having mm-hmm. enough to choose from. Yeah. That took a lot of my time. Almost every mm-hmm. weekend I was working on some new program idea. Yeah. Because it took a while to get any, even any interest going besides mm-hmm. my own public library. Mm-hmm. And I believe that now you have 300 classes on your website. Is that right? different options at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always coming up with new stuff. Yeah. New stuff all the time. I came up with something yesterday that Mm -hmm. I'll be posting soon. You know, it's always new stuff going up. How long are you typically there? And how much do you charge them for your workshop? Okay. So I always plan on arriving at a library half an hour early because I want the experience to be similar to students coming to my class at school. Kids mm-hmm. walk in. I want everything set. Yeah. I don't want this, oh, I forgot to put the scissors out, and oh, where's that paint? That sets a tone where the kids are going to take advantage and act up. And if you're working with patrons you don't even know, they're going to be like, what's with this person? They don't seem to have their act together. Mm-hmm. So I always, at least a half an hour, I arrive early. So between that and my, my programs last an hour, 
-hmm. However, I have found personally when I'm working with like an adult program, they tend to go over an hour, especially <laughs> if they're seniors. Yeah. So I'm usually pretty okay with that. I kind of know that they're going to want that extra time. And I just sort of gradually clean up around them mm -hmm. when it starts going over an hour and just say, oh, you know, we're a little past our time. I don't mind staying a little bit longer, but see if you can finish up, you know, but about an hour. But then you have that half an hour that you arrive early to, so an hour and a half. Uh Charge between 265 to 300, depending on what the program is. Uh, and the distance. If it's mm. going to be like an hour mm -hmm. to an hour and a half, I might charge three hundred. But typically, the range is more two sixty five to two seventy five. Mm -hmm. And that was pre coronavirus. Now it sounds like you've reduced the fee somewhat because you're not doing the traveling. You're not putting the materials together. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I have been quoting two hundred. Mm -hmm. But then negotiating on a one to one basis with librarians. Some say. Listen, we can do 175. Mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. The librarian who had me book for six programs, they're saying 100. Mm -hmm. Fine. But that's six mm -hmm. programs still. You have six. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to keep in mind I'm not driving, I'm not buying tons of materials to do this. Mm -hmm. So I have to take prepping. that off. But it still is time, especially if you're going to, um, you know, film and edit and post and share that's time how many classes do you teach a month a year do you have busy seasons during the year well uh for the past year the growth in terms of monthly programs has been a little uh, uh, it, it really grew let's just put it that way i went from doing several years ago i might have oh three or four a month some months i have 12 to 16 programs depending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that Halloween, the month of Halloween, which is October, is a huge month usually. Thanksgiving is pretty busy around any holiday. Mother's mm -hmm. Day, Father's Day, uh, Halloween, winter in general, because I feel like they think the traffic slows down in the winter. Uh, so 12 to 16 a month in a good year, which has been this year until now, and right. but literally i think it's funny because may i didn't have that much but then everybody started switching to virtual and i went from having a few to having almost double but again there's a lot of you know that just pre presents a lot of challenges like one of the programs i'll be doing will be a pre-tape program uh it's a parent and child program and i have to like she needs it by May 8th, so I need to, like, besides planning for school and releasing those programs mm. and doing all the duties that go with my job, mm. I have to get on with doing these pre-filmed programs soon so I yeah. don't get behind on those requests. You know? Yeah, and you have to spend the time to edit them as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, And that's new to me. Editing, mm -hmm. and I'm just using iMovie, is okay. all new to me. So yeah. I'm getting up to speed quickly, but it is sort of bare bones. Wait, one other thing I wanted to say yeah. is that in summer, when it's not a COVID-19 summer, yeah. like we're kind of on the fence about now, I could have 60 programs That's just between mid-June and August, mid-August. But it depends. I don't know what this summer is going to look like. I had about 55 already booked, yeah. but now things are like that woman okay those six programs i booked for you for can we make them all virtual recordings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so that's going to change my whole income yeah. for the summer so i think this summer is not going to be as great as it has been in the past and i'm yeah. just trying to adapt yeah but you know what in my mind it's just another tool in your pocket let's mm -hmm. say like we talked about in the past you get a very good reputation for doing these virtual programs. Mm -hmm. Somebody in another state says, I heard how good you are. Mm -hmm. I would like to have you do a pre-tape virtual program for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you already have it taped because if you just do a generic greeting and you don't say, Oh, hello, hop hog library. Yeah. You just say, hi everybody. Mm -hmm. It could be for anybody. It doesn't have yeah. to be for that specific library. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Personally, I'm fortunate enough to not have anyone affected in my life with the virus. 
So I'm sort of taking the time I have to funnel it into a positive direction as much as I can. And that's what you yeah. need. I think that's key is just to say, okay, I'm stuck in the mud. Mm-hmm. But what am I going to do personally mm-hmm. to give myself a little movement in the mud? You know, it's not going to be perfect. It's not mm-hmm. going to be the best. But right. the little things I do now could pay off later. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just take the optimistic route of make the best with what I have, negotiate with people in a fair way, Give them the best work you can because that's going to resonate and say, I want that person back again. They Mm -hmm. gave me a good deal. They worked with my budget. They presented a program that my patrons were thrilled about. Mm -hmm. And that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. You can't wallow in Mm self-pity. I can't sit here and wring my hands. That's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. I just got to get out there and do something. So I'm Mm -hmm. very proactive in my thinking like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying it's not emotionally draining at times. It is. Yeah. But I just like by changing my thinking to what can I do despite the circumstances, it takes my thinking away from the negative mm-hmm. and drives it more toward a positive. So what I've heard you say and, and something that I really um, believe is that librarians like people who are not flaky, who show up and they're organized and can put on a good program that engages people, I think that's really part of our success yep. is that, you know, our emails are really organized, like that email that I send out, like what to expect next, has it all listed out for them so they don't have to wonder, oh, how do I arrange the tables or how do I do this? How do I do that? What do I need to have ready for them? It's all there for them. And, you know, we didn't have that in the beginning, but as we've grown, I've you know, anticipated all those questions they're going to have. And that's and all. You have it on the, um, they send me a contract and they'll say, how would you like the, the room arranged? Mm. And, you know, do you need audio visual? There's a little checklist, audio visual, sync, this, that. And I'll, I'll say, please cover the tables. Uh, I'll say access to a sink. Yeah. And I always say like a table for the presenter. Mm-hmm. Because you need a place to put your, sometimes I've been given a card table. I'm like, um, I need a bigger table than this place. <laughs> you know, it's mm-hmm. like it's not going to work to hold all my paints and supplies. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, unfortunately there are some libraries where I literally am in the basement and I have to go up mm-hmm. to the second floor to get access to water, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you just manage. Yeah. It's always something different. You, you, mm-hmm. Unless you've been there before, you don't know what the situation is going to be right. like. Until you right. get there. Yeah. Right. Our, our libraries must be different because I think I've probably been asked to sign a contract maybe three times. I, I, get, I'm, I get contracts all the time in the mail that they want me to send back. Sign. Yeah, no. with, uh, oh, yeah. I just think it varies from state yeah. to state, from region to region, from director to director. I mean, it's just, again, it's that flexibility, I think, to adapting to your situation is right. kind of key when you're doing this sort of thing. Right. You just don't know who's going to walk in the door. But I mean, one constant that I found is that librarians as a whole are just the nicest people. Oh, yeah. They're so easy to work with. They so are. Easy. And not only that, I find the um, custodial staff to mm-hmm. be the happiest, friendliest people ever. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. always am friendly to them because they're helping with tables. They're bringing in that yeah. big garbage pail. They're always seem very happy with their job and very pleasant. I would say a couple years in, the idea occurred to myself and my husband that, well, you know, uh, maybe you could bring somebody in to uh, offer programs who might also have a background in the arts or be interested in doing this. And so I thought immediately of an old friend. Mm -hmm. I knew her as a parent for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I knew that she was doing, you know, she's a science teacher, but she was doing her own business on the side called Clay With Me mm-hmm. because she was very much into clay and throwing on the wheel. And so I approached her and I said, you know, maybe you would be interested in doing this. And it turned out she was actually doing a lot of programs for our school in the summertime through our mm-hmm. summer adventures program. Here's an opportunity for you. Would you consider it? And to be honest, she's been with me the longest of anybody I've worked with. Mm -hmm. And she's been the most consistent in getting work for herself. And she 
was hungrier. You know what I mean? Like I want to make as many program options as I can because I want that business. Mm -hmm. So she's made it a mission for herself to get more programming. So in turn, you know, the agreement we worked out, which I make an annual agreement is that uh, since I have an established website with established customers coming to the website to book and see what's available and mm -hmm. see what's going on. I said, this is what I'll do for you. I will do all your advertising, meaning that anything you give me, I will post on the website and twice a year minimum, I send out flyers to public librarians all over the state mm -hmm. within, you know, an hour to sometimes an hour and a half radius of what we can drive. I will send flyers to the teen librarian, the adult and the children's. Um, I will pay for that. I will pay for the postage, the mailings, the flyers and the hosting of the website in return after you, you subtract your expenses from your program, from whatever profit you have left, give me 15%. Mm -hmm. And she agreed to that. And we make it an annual thing so that she can renew or she can say, hey, I'm done. I want to go do my own thing now. But she stuck with me for many, many years. That's just so smart because she's a subcontractor. You're not telling her where. She's not an employee. You're not telling her where to go, when to do it. Nope. She's scheduling and everything. So you don't have to deal with. And I don't schedule her. Nope. Right. She takes care of all and that. And she is. I'm not going to worry about her calendar when she's available. So uh, under each program offering we will say this is offered exclusively by Catherine Martin please mm -hmm. contact Catherine directly at this number and this email mm -hmm. and that way the librarian knows now sometimes like the librarian wrote to me with the six programs she had several for Catherine too and I said I can speak for myself and my programs I'm willing to work for that amount of money for a pre-taped here you go you know program mm -hmm. but you will have to confirm with Catherine on hers and Josephine she is specializes in early childhood and she just posted a program with me for cloud dough, you know, mm -hmm. homemade cloud dough. Mm -hmm. She got an inquiry within two days mm -hmm. for that program. Mm -hmm. So she's not doing as much either. She's, she's, you know, she's a bit of a photographer. She's trying to grow that business. She's very interested in art. So she's sort of doing a lot of things. So some people are happy just to have a couple programs. Mm -hmm. Others, like Catherine, would really like to have a lot of programming to supplement their income. And in this business model, it's figuring out what makes you stand out is different mm -hmm. than the other programmers. Like some programs, are, I just do paint and stuff. That's all I do. I think you're limiting the amount of programs because that's going to be a flash in the pan after a while. And people aren't mm -hmm. going to be that interested in paint and sip anymore. If you are offering things that are unique, that are different, or you have a particular need in your local librarian that we don't have enough early childhood programs, or we can't reach the teens. We need teen programmers. Mm -hmm. That's how my business grew in terms of reaching out to teens and then eventually adults is people just saying, what do you have for teens? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll develop a bunch of programs. And the first one I developed that was a runaway hit was a lamp program. Nobody was doing that. Mm. And I was getting tons of lamp programs until they discontinued my lamp that I used to use at Ikea. So explain but, that uh, a little bit. You were, you were buying lamps from Ikea, and yeah, then what I'm, were they I'm doing buying, with I it? I was buying lamps from Ikea, and then they discontinued the product. Mm -hmm. And oh. then it became too expensive. Yeah. But what was the project they were doing with the lamp? Uh, they were, it was a, um, a half-round uh, if you consider cutting a cylinder in half, so you just have the half round and the flat back, it was a wall mounted lamp with a cord. Mm -hmm. And it had this silly picture on the outside that was printed on like cardboard of two dancing frogs. Mm -hmm. I said, what would happen if I just took that paper off, gave them copy paper, let them draw their own pictures. And then when you snap on that light, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, everything started to glow. Yeah. Kids loved it. Yeah. I loved it. It was so easy to do. The only thing it brought off, put the bulb in, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they like that, having something for their room that oh, they can yeah. make all their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
yeah, I can see why that was popular. It also was different. It was a different thing that they hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. So I try to always think, you know, like I visit a lot of, you know, teen oriented sites. You know where I get a lot of ideas from? You're going to laugh. Where? Pottery Bar and Teen. Oh, yeah. They have a great catalog. They have tons of ideas. You look at, I could do that. That would Mm -hmm. be a cool idea. I'll just modify it into this. And and all of a sudden you've got a cool teen idea. Mm Mm-hmm. That yeah. is for decorating their wall or putting on their bed or, you know, like a pillow or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And so I find visiting teen-focused merchandise websites will just mm-hmm. give you ideas mm-hmm. that you can modify. Yeah. Yeah, they that's a really good tip. don't have to be fine art-focused, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and teens, traditionally, I think for some librarians, they're hard to reach it's hard to get them to come Mm -hmm. into programming. And we have generally less teens show up than younger kids, mostly because, you know, for little kids, you can say as a mom, if they're eight years old, hey, there's an art program going on, let's go. But with teenagers, it's much more complicated to get them to show up at a certain time. You're not copying it. You're just using it as a jumping off point. You know, right now for me, I've been developing a lot of Harry Potter themed projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of that came because they had a whole Harry Potter line at Pottery Bottom Team. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, and it ties in with libraries. It's still a popular book. Very popular. And teens yeah. still, it still resonates with teens. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like test drive your ideas with kids that you want to work with. Mm-hmm. If you have a teen at home, would they find this interesting? I used to always tell, ask my daughter, Isabel, what do you think? Do you think kids would like this? Do you think teens would like that? I'll send her a little picture and I'll say, what's your opinion of this project? Mm-hmm. You know, you want the real deal to respond to the ideas you have too. Yeah, that really helps. And, and you can get so many ideas from librarians because they're dealing with your market, basically your, your audience oh, yes. and kids will ask them for things. And we've gotten yes. a lot of ideas from librarians and they want to have you do something that's going to make their teens happy because the happy teens are going to come back from our programming, which makes them relevant. For the teens, go to any kind of website that's about college teens, dorm decorating, Mm -hmm. and you get ideas. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And in Etsy, tons of ideas, you know. So you just start cataloging, taking notes. Hmm, that's a potential idea. Hmm, that's a potential idea. And then some of them drift to the top to be like, that's what I need to act on. The mm-hmm. other ones, yeah, they're okay, but they're not that exciting. Mm-hmm. And then I put it out there and see what kind of response I get. You know, I have plenty of programs that don't get much response. And after a while, you just say, eh, that's a dog, take it down, you know. Mm-hmm. And what? I made one. But also keeping your ideas different. Mm-hmm. You've got to set yourself apart from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Like, I find actually... And maybe it's partially because I enjoy it so much. I do a lot of programs that are 3D. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of programs that are painting, maybe on a canvas, but involve texture. I'll show you something. So this is a a project that was for Mother's Day. Uh, And I actually had booked it. mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's a little handbag. Yeah. These are all crystals, mosaics, Mardi Gras beads. A little dimensional paint, right? Mm-hmm. So when I do a painting, I might include shells or crystals mm-hmm. or mosaics yep. and give texture. Mm-hmm. And when you work with young children, they are so sensory driven that I find that when I bring a sensory element to the project, mm-hmm. there's such a deep response. Yeah. And I just personally like that. Mm -hmm. So this was for a mother's day for like little children, like K through three. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Now it was canceled. So what do I do? (laughs) Go here. And I make a paper version. Yeah. That is, you know, based on the same concept. Yeah. You pivot to something you can do virtually. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, so that's what I did. I took like the person who had me booked for the painting. We said, well, how about we do it this way instead? So kids take a manila fo- fo- a folder at home mm-hmm. and let's change it into this little 
purse. You put a special message in there for mom. Mm -hmm. And so that's again, adapting Mm -hmm. and just saying what would make sense? Would kids have a manila folder at home? Probably. I mean, I think what we're talking about here is problem solving. And I think artists and teachers are really good at problem solving. And to shift quickly into that gear, too. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not willing to adapt to the needs of the child, you're in trouble real fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My way or the highway doesn't always work. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. So what's your, your advice for anybody who wants to start teaching freelance art classes or any other kind of class? Um, I would go to your public library Mm -hmm. and go in with a couple ideas in your pocket. I notice that you have been offering some kids art programs and, you know, I have a background in art and I have a couple programs that I'd like you to consider. Mm -hmm. Either bring an, an actual physical artifact do you think kids would be interested in this and then if it connects to like a picture book that's even better for young kids in particular they love a picture book connection um and would you be interested in having me come in and you don't even have to say that you're not that experienced you know my just come in with a with a little pitch my programs are going to be an hour long this is what i'm going to charge i'll bring all the supplies And I think you need to start small with immediate community like that. Or go to your child's school and say, uh, maybe I could do a little after-school workshop for kids. And I have a bunch of projects in mind. Would you be interested? Do you have an after-school program that you're Mm -hmm. looking for someone to lead? You know, Mm -hmm. start small. Mm -hmm. See what the response is. Mm And then look around at what you can go to anybody's library website to see what's being offered on their calendar. Mm -hmm. What programs are they offering? Does mine fit into what the kinds of programs they like to offer? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, you may need to rethink it. Or you could say, oh, yeah, definitely. I see they do a lot of kids programs. That must be a popular theme. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. If you're a cook and you're brave enough to go in and do cooking programs, you're going to make a bundle of money because, and I don't know what's needed there. If you have to have a particular license to, Mm -hmm. you know, health, I don't know, health and human source resources, life. I don't know what kind of cooking license you might have to have to do that, but they are booked constantly. Mm -hmm. They're in such demand for kids, teens, and adults. Mm -hmm. Always a big winner. I mm-hmm. wouldn't go there personally, but people who are experienced, I'm just, it's too, um, it's not my thing. Definitely start with something you're passionate about, yeah. something you have experience with. That, that's right. the way to go. Right. Yeah. And you know, let's face it, I'm maybe 10 years out from retirement. Mm-hmm. So my thinking is, if I'm not decrepit at that point, I could still be doing this business when I retire. Mm-hmm. I think this is a great retirement gig. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I'm just going to keep it going um, as long as I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect for retirement because it's it's not all the time. You can control your schedule. That's right. You can control what you're teaching for the most part. And I think especially for teachers, maybe they've been in a situation in schools where behavior is an issue. We have very, very rarely had any behavior issues ever in a library. So easy. Well, first of all, you're always the new teacher. So you have that little bit of honeymoon period going on. And I don't know, they're just the kids that it attracts. They're, it's different. They want to be there, first of all. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I find that kids sign up because either their parents want to keep them busy or they, they want to do it. They say, oh, I, I want to do that. And the parents are willing to take them and they are more motivated Mm -hmm. and engaged Mm -hmm. and wanting to participate. Right. And so you don't have the behavioral issues. I could see it doing quite well, as you said, during retirement, because I have built it up over the years. Well, this is exciting. Thank you so much for doing like an official interview. I know we've spoken a few times. Yeah. Unofficially. I think that, you know, if it helps anybody, I mean, I really do feel for all the workers, whether you're a 
waiter and waitress or mm -hmm. or you have a restaurant or mm -hmm. it's I feel very sad mm -hmm. yeah and not everybody is able to pivot you have young children you have an elderly mother and father you have your own personal baggage issues your husband right. lost his job too I mean mm -hmm. So, you know, some families, both people have lost their jobs. And I mean, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. the stress. I mean, I know when my husband was between jobs, I felt so stressed out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was very scared. I was mm -hmm. very worried. Mm -hmm. And it really, I could barely, I could barely handle it. It was really mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. And that's what gives me, the only way I can handle it is to shift into what can I do? Mm -hmm. And that's literally how I sort of mentally handle those stress points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We've been in the same position a few times and yeah, yeah it is very stressful. Mm -hmm. No, but it was my pleasure. And um, I think this really is an opportunity for a lot of people. And I think people are in some ways it's, it's the golden ticket for people, isn't it? Yep. They finally, I'm going to go after what I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. because I have to and that's right. sort of like a remarkable place to be in mm -hmm. and a hopeful place to be in doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're going to be a huge wild success but who knows you know you got to give it a chance right so if it's a kick in the pants somebody needed to really go for it and this is the chance they have and they're going for it mm -hmm. that's a kind of a wonderful moment isn't it well thank you so much oh my pleasure really enjoyed it's it really fun Okay, have an awesome yeah. day. All right, you too, Doris. Bye.